One of the unsung heroes of the sound industry and underappreciated for sure, this year is the Heil PR40. And today, we're going to pit it against all the usual suspects that are in and around its price range. This should be fun, and uh, it's going to be a whole lot more editing for me, I think. Ugh. So before you ask, no, this is not a German mic company. Heil is a company founded by Bob Heil, who has worked in the sound industry for years and launched this company in 1966 as a live sound company. Now, most of his first work was servicing auditoriums and bowling alleys in the St. Louis area, but soon moved on to live concert sound. It was February of 1970 that the Grateful Dead were supposed to play in St. Louis, and their sound guy was up on some drug charges and couldn't leave the state of California. Ah, the 70s. Someone offered Bob Heil's name up as a person that could work it for them, and the show ended up being a wild success, all because of Bob Hale's technique. Hale's life basically took off after that. And after the tour was over, Bob Heil ended up touring with The Who, Joe Walsh, Peter Frampton, Jeff Beck, just to name a few of the biggest names in the 1970s. So this guy, yeah, he knew his stuff. In fact, there is so much more to his story, you might want to check out some of the backstory on him. It's amazing how he worked and how he got around to doing what he did. So then, around 1980, Bob quit touring and decided to get into microphones, all because of his other interest, ham radio. And of course, that led to the first Heil microphone being born. One other really cool piece of information on the company Heil Sound is also the only manufacturer to be invited to exhibit at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's pretty cool. Now, the one thing that separates Heil's microphone is that they use a large one and one eighth inch capsule on their dynamic microphones. Now, these have been in on the mics since day one and have helped launch the whole line of PR mics. Now, the one we have is the Heil PR40. And yeah, it's kind of gotten buried by all the other broadcast mics like the SM7B and such. It's a single polar pattern and a dress microphone. And yes, I do need to say this because, well, the mic actually says it. I can't imagine the list of things that led to them actually having to put directions on their own microphone. It has a 28 hertz to 18 kilohertz frequency range, 148 dBs of max SPL, and we're going to get into that in a bit, and a sensitivity of negative 53.9 dB at 1 kilohertz. It's a relatively low impedance of 600 ohms. If you look at the frequency response graph, you'll notice that this microphone has one heck of a boost in the upper ranges, so it's already muy bright. So let's get back to that high SPL. The microphone is known for being used as a kick drum mic, and apparently the results are quite smooth. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever used it for that. I would love to hear how it sounds. Now, I can't imagine the off-axis rejection and coloration test is going to go well since, well, you know, they actually published the frequency response that includes 180 degrees on the mic. So let's see what happens. This is the microphone about six inches from my face directly onto the capsule. This is 90 degrees to the side address of the capsule. This is 180 degrees from the rear of the microphone. Now for plosive rejection, and for that I've actually got to take off the pop filter. It's kind of an ordeal here. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Okay then, let's see how this microphone actually competes with the few mics that are within its price range and a few that are, well, not. This is the Heil PR40, about six inches from my face and aimed at the corner of my mouth. This is the Rode Pod mic, about six inches from my face and aimed at the corner of my mouth. Which one do you like? This is the Heil PR40, it's about six inches off my face and aimed at the corner of my mouth. This is the Electro Voice RA320, it's about six inches off my face and aimed at the corner of my mouth. Either one? Bueller?
Bueller. This is the Hale PR40. It's about six inches off my face and aimed at the corner of my mouth. And this one is the RE20, the Electrovoice RE20. And it's also about six inches off my face and aimed at the corner of my mouth. Moving on. And finally, the grandpappy, the biggest one of them all, we've got the Heil PR40. It's about six inches off my face, aimed at the corner of my mouth against the SM7B. Once again, about six inches off my face and aimed at the corner of my mouth. You'll notice this one's just a touch closer as the capsule's a little further down, just in case anyone else wants to hammer me in the comments for my mic placement. Anyone? Anyone? Moving on. So I guess time for some final thoughts. Now, of course, this mic is competitively priced in between the RE320 and the SM7B slash RE20. On one side, you do have the RE320. It's about 50 bucks cheaper. And I believe the SM7B and the RE20 go for about $399. But then is this mic any good? Well, yeah, it's a great mic. It sounds great for me anyways. This is the catch with mics in this price range. Very few of them are gonna sound great on everyone. And I think this mic is the perfect example of that. That high presence boost from about 1K to 10K on this thing isn't going to complement every single voice. And that's a big issue, perhaps why this mic hasn't seen as much action with podcasters. There are a lot of other mics that are more forgiving of different voices, much like the RE20 and the SM7B. This one though is a bit more picky about the voices it wants to elevate. I've heard this actually make voices sparkle and others sound like dog crap. So yeah, if you're in the market for a great broadcast style mic, put this on your list to try out. You never know, it might fit you like a glove. But what did you think of the sound? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, crush that like button like the cockroach it is. If you really like the video though, give that subscribe button a little wink and a smile. Make it feel special. You better call it in the morning though. Sorry, cheers, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm having my own sound in here would be nice.